Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and this is how to build my Spectre V4 airplane. The Spectre has earned its rank as the quintessential basher, catering both to beginners and advanced pilots with smooth, stable handling and predictable stall characteristics. However, for me, it's known as the old battle tank, mainly because this is the platform of choice when I want to test new equipment that I'm not so sure how well it's going to do. The main reason is because even when things get screwed up, this airplane still flies predictably, and if it goes in, well, it's quite durable and usually leaves unscathed. A couple of things before you start building. If this is your first time building an airplane, please, please follow the tutorial precisely. It will help immensely with your problems. I go over every single detail. Also, there are two critical things about this airplane. Number one is the tail. The tail must be straight and level. You'll note that when in the build video, I set it on this central block and then I set the tail and measure it about a half of an inch above the table. This is critical. If the tail is not straight and level, the plane will either want to pitch up, dive, or twist, requiring a lot of trim. Sure, it'll fly fine with a lot of trim, but you're going to have your elevator or ailerons at a reasonably or unreasonably high angle. The other thing that is extremely critical on this airplane is center of gravity. You'll note that I have the main spar about an inch to an inch and a quarter behind the leading edge of the wing. This is the center of balance or center of gravity for the airplane. You'll see if I put my fingers along that line and let go, the airplane reasonably balances there. Okay, It's better to err on the side of nose heavy than tail heavy. So if the airplane doesn't seem to fly right, or if it's the first time ever flying, add a little bit of extra nose weight to get the center of gravity forward a little bit, and that will help make sure that your maiden flight goes well. So with that, let's build the airplane. Start out this build by gluing the wings together. Apply a heavy amount of glue to the center of one of the wing cores, then press them together, work around to spread the glue, then pull them apart. I wipe my fingers down the side of the glue just to make sure that I've got an even coating and it's not spotty. Then set the wings to the side and allow them to dry for about 10 minutes as the glue is a contact adhesive. Repeat this procedure with the aileron side, gluing only the wing core. Do not apply glue to the aileron as it has to move. Again, a heavy amount of glue, press it into the side of the wing, work it around, then pull it apart and wipe with your finger. Again, these will be set apart approximately 10 minutes to dry. Repeat this for the other side. Now we'll move on to the fuselage. Splitting the fuselage in half, apply adhesive to the front section and the rear section of the fuselage, leaving the central plug out. Once you've applied a heavy amount of glue, press the two sides together and work them around. Then separate them and leave them to the side to dry for approximately 10 minutes as the glue is a contact adhesive. Once the glue has set on the main wing, press it together to form the wing of the airplane. Then, using a straight edge, approximately one inch back from the leading edge, cut a line approximately one eighth of an inch deep in which you'll install the main stress spar. Then take the glue and embed the nozzle down into the line you have just cut and inject a good amount of glue into the slot. This will hold the spar in place. Then install your spar from tip to tip. The spar should come within a half inch of the wing tip. One hint here is do not run your fingers down the spar. It is made of fiberglass and the fibers will get into your skin and leave an itch you will not soon forget. So be careful not to get any fiberglass in your hands. Repeat this procedure on the bottom side of the wing, noting that the wing spars must be right on top of each other to form the strong beam that stiffens the wing. By now the glue on the fuselage should be dry and you can simply push it back together. Now we'll work on sparring it. Take one of the spars and cut it into four sections. Two of them 16 inches long, the other one 8 inches long. These will be used to stress up the fuselage and keep it from breaking in a crash. 
Mark the front and rear portions of where the spar will be embedded in the fuselage. I recommend putting the front of the spar in the approximate place that the main fuselage plug starts. Then, using a straight edge, mark a line along the straight edge and follow up with a knife. Again, cut about 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch deep into the foam. Inject glue and embed your spar. Repeat this procedure for the top portion as well as the other side. You'll want these spars on either side of where the fuselage meets the wing as this will keep this area from snapping in a hard crash. Laminating the airplane makes it a lot stronger and also makes the plane a lot faster. I recommend starting with the center of the wing and then working your way outwards, working out all bubbles. I'm using a covering iron for this, but a clothing iron works just fine. You want the temperature around 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or enough to boil water. Use a good amount of pressure and continue to move along. Don't leave the heat in one area too much or you could melt the foam. Once done with the top, flip it over and repeat with the bottom. To laminate the fuselage, use a single piece to laminate all four sides and simply wrap all the way around the fuselage. Please note that the central plug, the white section in the fuselage, is still not glued in. That is simply there for a placeholder. That will be glued in in the final steps. Wrap the laminate all the way around the aircraft with the dull side facing the aircraft as that's the adhesive side and work around with a covering iron. In the areas where the laminate will fold over on itself, simply take a knife and scrape down that edge and overlap it. It should be almost invisible when laminated properly. Now laminate the booms of the aircraft. Again, use the same method as the fuselage, simply rolling the boom over and laminating the entire boom in one sheet. Be very careful not to warp the boom. If the boom is warped, it will cause the plane to fly adversely, so don't add too much pressure here. You might notice that I have an extra spar in the top and the bottom of this boom. I do this to add extra strength, as these spars are fairly inexpensive and can be found almost anywhere. So for added durability, I recommend you buy a few extra spars and install them where else I've shown in this video. Now we'll install the aileron servos. Mark out approximately the center of the aileron section of the wing. You want to connect to the center of the aileron to eliminate flutter and bending problems. Mark out where the servo is going to go with a pen, then cut out the laminate with a knife. You can go all the way through the foam with a knife if you like, or you can make a tool out of a soldering gun like I did using a piece of welding wire or music wire and heating it up and carving it out that way. Either way works just fine. Once that section is hogged out, add a little bit of glue to the servo and embed it down in the slot you've just made. The control horns are a VAS specialty manufacturer and are extremely strong. Take the control horn and press into the foam to make a mark. Then use a knife to cut out those two marks so that the control horn can go all the way through. Add a little bit of glue to the control horn and add one of the slide locking plates to the control horn and slide it all the way back. Then add a little bit more glue to the control horn and press through the wing where you made the marks. Then flip the wing over, apply glue to the back side of the aileron section and press down very firmly on the locking plate and slide it back into the teeth of the control horn. This will make an extremely strong control horn. The linkage is made from two clevises connected by a single piece of threaded rod. Screw one clevis in two or three turns and then install in the control horn. Then using the other clevis as a guide, take a pair of diagonals or wire cutters and cut off all remaining all thread. Then screw the clevis in until the approximate length is achieved and connect to your servo. To install the booms, measure between 4 and 3 quarters and 5 inches on either side of the center of the wing. 
Do this in two locations so a straight line can be drawn. Do this on both sides of the wings. Then install your booms. Take the tape measure and make sure that the booms are equally spaced in the front and the back. If they are, then run a line down the side of each boom. Remove the booms and then add a good amount of glue to the inside of the cutout on each of the booms. Then simply press the booms back into place to reinstall them. Once the booms are glued into place, you can also remove them and use the glue as a contact adhesive and install them 10 minutes later. Either way is up to you. Just be certain the booms are straight and level with the wing, otherwise it will cause the plane to fly adversely. So however you choose to do this, it's up to you. Install the motor mount by gluing the bottom plate to the fuselage. You'll see that there's a cutout in, a, in the fuselage that accepts the plate. Add a heavy amount of glue here because this is the only thing holding the motor in place and these motors are often quite powerful. Again, the glue is a contact adhesive, so you can press it into place, move it around, then pull it out. If the motor thrust angle needs to be adjusted, you can heat the polycarbonate mount up and adjust to a different angle if you need. The elevator is created by cutting a single flute out of the horizontal stabilizer. Be very careful to only cut through one side of the corrugated plastic. Make two parallel cuts to remove this portion. Again, be sure you don't cut too far as you don't want to cut this part out, but simply create a hinge. Once the hinge has been created, now you can install the control horn. Install the control horn just one flute back from the hinge you've made. Use the control horn itself to align and then press something sharp or just use the screws to make a mark on, wh on where the control horn will go. Then, Press something all the way down through the elevator, such as a drill bit or a pen, and then pass the screws down through the nylon control horn and through the bottom of the elevator assembly. Install the locking plate on the back side and screw it down tight, but don't compress the coroplast too much. You just want it snug. Once done, now we can install the servo. The servo gets glued into the slot pre-cut slot. Add a little bit of glue before putting it in as well as afterwards. Once installed, make the linkage similar to the way you did with the ailerons. Using the control horns as a guide, install one of the clevises into the control horn, screw the threaded rod in two or three turns, and then cut the end off, screw the other clevis in, and connect to the servo. To install the tail into the booms, simply add glue to both the top and the bottom of the cutout in each boom, and then slide the tail section in place, being sure it's centered. When installed, you don't necessarily need to remove this to let the contact adhesive work. What I like to do is simply install it, then come back in about 20 minutes to half an hour, and then press down on the booms to be sure it's locked in good and tight. The fuselage is simply glued in place. I usually add the glue to the main fuselage rather than the wing. Add a heavy amount of glue here to be sure that this doesn't ever come loose in flight as this is what attaches all the electronics to the rest of the airplane. You'll also note that I cut the back out of the wing to make sure there's room for the motor and the motor mount to clear. Once you've got a good amount of glue in, install the Install the fuselage by lifting up on the one section and sliding it back in, and then press down securely. Use the viewing windows, the electronics windows, to be sure it's aligned. Although not expressly part of the kit, functional rudder may be added to this airplane to make it handle as a pattern ship. To do so, cut out a flute approximately two flutes back from the rear of the cutout to make a foldable rudder. Then install a control horn and a servo 
onto the rudder section to make it functional. To install the rudder, glue it in place securely by adding glue not only to the horizontal stabilizer but also to the side of the booms. Do this on both the top and the bottom of the aircraft and then slide the rudder sections in place. Now if you didn't add functional rudder to the aircraft, you might opt to simply tape these in place or glue them in loosely. This will cause the tail sections to pop off in the event of a hard landing or crash which keeps them from getting damaged or bent out of shape. On the other hand, they do get worked out of shape pretty easily if they're not glued in solid, so I leave this choice up to you. At this point you want to be sure the tail is level. I'm using the central block from the fuselage, set the plane on top of it, and then use a tape measure to make sure that my vertical stabilizers are approximately one half inch off of the table. Now we'll install the speed control and the power filter. The speed control goes into the cutout in the back of the plane. The power filter can go wherever you like if you even use one. I like to use one to clean up my video and thus I'll put it just in front of the speed control. Since my speed control is excessively large, I'm going to have to cut out a little bit more of the foam than I normally would for an average size speed control. I also need to cut out a section for my power filter as I'm doing here. You also have the cutout section underneath the fuselage that you can use for other electronics. However, I like the power filter to be where I can have access to it. The bottom cutout underneath where I'm installing the speed control is an excellent place to mount a receiver since the airplane is usually above you, giving a good signal. Now for the video transmitter, I'm installing it just to the side of the fuselage and embedding it in the wing. Another place you can install it is in the main fuselage right behind the battery. Either way is good, but I'm trying to gain a little bit of separation from my receiver for longer range missions. Again, just hog out the foam and embed the speed control or the video transmitter into this section. The final stage of assembly is simply to run your wires. As you can see, I have the fuselage removed and the receiver in the middle of the wing rather than underneath the cutout in the fuselage. In hindsight, underneath the fuselage probably would have been a better place, but this gives me plenty of access to run the wires. I'm using a hot work tool to cut the channels just a little bit wider to make it easier to install the servo wires into the bays. Then simply press the servo wires down into the troughs and then cover them up with clear packing tape or laminate. This will keep them from getting pulled out in landings or in flight. The center of gravity is set by the battery. Most times the battery is going to go all the way in the front of the fuselage cutout. This is a 4200 3 cell I'm using and it's going all the way in the front, especially because of the dual rudder assembly I've installed adding weight to the tail. What you'll want to do is balance the airplane on the main spar with the battery simply resting on the fuselage. Wherever it balances, that's where it will go. Use the battery as a template and then cut the section of the foam out of the plug to house the battery. Once cut out, add glue to this section, then use your fingers to spread the fuselage apart and shove this piece up inside the aircraft and then push it together solid. And with that, now you should be ready for your first flights. I'll update in a follow-up video with different techniques to build this and launch this to make sure your fingers are clear of the spinning prop when you go to throw. I'm Ivy Crazy, and keep them flying.